Hi guys, Steve here. Imagine spending your hard-earned money on a game with PvP so you can fight other players. A game that you love and you've spent hundreds or thousands of hours playing. Then the publisher of that game joins in on those PvP servers to fight the very people they've sold their game to. But whenever the publisher's tribe gets attacked, they ban you and all your friends from ever playing it again. Well that's what's allegedly happened to 90 plus players of the Island Boys tribe and many other players in Ark Survival Evolved. It's been a few months since the Island Boys were unfairly banned for no reason after raiding T-Tribe, the tribe that a publisher of Ark, Snail Games, allegedly plays in. The Island Boys accounts have still not been restored. It's wrong, unjust and totally corrupt, so I'm forced to make this video. Now the publisher Snail Games thinks what's the worst that could happen? A few people making a few angry videos for a while, then it will all blow over and be forgotten about. Wrong. What they don't seem to realise, and they have underestimated, is how people feel about this. It's one thing to never release anything on time. It's another releasing it with loads of bugs, with some never getting fixed in 8 years. To say the upgrade will be free when it's not, to charge us again for the game we've already paid for, to lose all your work you've spent thousands of hours on over the years, to lie about release dates knowing full well it will not be ready over and over, all that is just some of the crap we put up with over the years to play the game we love. But it's on a completely different level when people like you and me that have brought and paid for the game, played a section of it they loved, then get banned for no reason just because the alleged dev tribe didn't like getting their asses beat. It's like them selling people the game, then banning them from playing it and stealing their money. It's theft and they are corrupt scumbags for doing it. Snail and T-Tribe only want to beat and wipe people weaker than them to make themselves feel good. But if anyone gets close to beating them, they ban them. It's like a five-year-old crying home to mummy and taking their ball with them so no one else can play because they lost the game. But in this case, because Snail are the game publisher, they also own the pitch, they are refing their own game themselves, as they are admin on their own servers, so will ban anyone who's about to beat them. Now it seems like they hold all the cards, but they don't. The most important one is held by you and every player of Ark. So because Snail Games and T-Tribe are corrupt and don't play fairly, they have made it so there's not much point for you to join the Conquest maps, the PvP servers that they are on and control. And if nobody plays on Conquest, then T-Tribe will have no one to beat or even fight, and they'll end up waiting on their servers, wasting their time with their dicks in their hands. That's how T-Tribe loses. I'm amazed that anyone will still want to waste their time playing on Conquest after what's happened. When the only two outcomes are get wiped by T-Tribe or get banned from Conquest if you start to win. You only allow yourselves to be playthings of T-Tribe if you play on their Conquest servers. So there's no point playing on Conquest until the corruption completely stops and the Island Boys and everyone else wrongfully banned have been restored. Snail Games' reputation is in the gutter. Even Asmogold and Moist Critical have covered it, and their audience are in the millions. The biggest video game corruption news of the year. 93 players in Ark Survival were banned after raiding a rival tribe who got them banned by the publishers of the game with no explanation. Absolutely, in, absolute insanity that needs to be answered. Here we go. Let's take a look at the video. The so basically, the the group they raided, these guys think had developers on it, and whenever they actually raided them and almost beat them, the developers banned everybody who was raiding them. Okay. From everything I can see, T Tribe is the tribe of so it's not the devs it seems like it's their game publisher snail games yes ah, okay. yeah, yeah yeah so i we can have chat fact check us but i believe what it is is the devs and them are in cahoots where if they ask for someone to get banned for any reason they will ban them which is gotcha. the, that's what the big hoopla was okay and so yeah. the other thing i'm now seeing is like, when I try to figure out where T-Tribe is, there are people complaining about T-Tribe years and years ago. Yeah. 
because they're known as a Chinese hacking tribe of <laughs> aimbotters and other kind of cheats. That's what I'm saying. This is all the way back to 2016. Oh, okay. <laughs> so this goes way back. I mean, tons and tons of forums complaining about yeah. T-Train. <laughs> T were in the chat of a name-botting speed hacking streamer begging him to find us and kill us. <laughs> Aimbotting speed hacking streamer? Oh my f god. So, yeah. Basically, the boys and I have been kind of keeping our ears to the ground to what's been happening in the art community after that clan got banned for a completely legitimate, normal, no cheating raid on another tribe. They were banned from all the official servers and it, it unveiled a whole rabbit hole of corruption. So we thought it would be fun if we built up from ground zero here, having no experience in the game, to get to a point where we can raid that same tribe's base and see if they ban us as well. Just out of curiosity, if it's just going to be blanket bans for anyone that raids the dev's favorite team's base. So, we thought that would be pretty fun. We're fighting for you. Yeah, we're fighting for the community, because that is some corrupt shit. Maybe I should try to talk to some of these guys and see what they have to say. It just, yeah, it feels like a game that never came out of early access. Why is it popular? You know what else is popular? It's Twilight Movie Series, and that was dog shit. Well, I mean, if a lot of other people like the game, I'm happy for them. So, I mean, it, but it's not for me. Thanks to Zach and Charlie for covering this. I'm sure the people that's been banned really appreciate it. And their links are in the description below. Now, this also brings up other problems. At the moment, the Island Boys are only banned from official Conquest servers, controlled by Snell Games. If they really had been cheating in ARK, they would get banned from playing on all ARK official multiplayer PvP servers. They have not been banned from all the other servers, so that means the ARK developers' wildcard know they have done nothing wrong. The Island Boys even videoed themselves raiding to show that they were not cheating. To prove it, because they knew how corrupt Snail Games and T-Tribe are, and might falsely ban them. The remake, Ark Survival Ascended, is meant to have a new, all-in-one login system, where you can log into one account for any platform, PC or console. If Snail Games has access to this, or if they order wildcard to ban people, they could ban you from everywhere and every game mode, not just Conquest, and banning you from every version of a game you've purchased, whether you got it both on PC and console. We don't know how it's going to work yet, so you really need to ask wildcard if Snail Games has access to the ban controls, because that could be a real problem. Ark Survival Ascended, the upgrade to Unreal Engine 5, was meant to hail in a new era to help stop cheating. But how on earth are Wildcard going to crack down on cheating if her own publisher is one of the biggest participants and supporters in cheating and corruption? Whatever measures Wildcard implement to try and stop cheating, Snail Games can just overrule them so the very foundation of the game will be corrupt, as the publisher thinks it's good and okay to cheat as they're doing it themselves. Most of the bad press is aimed at Snail Games, but Wildcard is not doing themselves any favours either. By promoting Conquest on a community crunch, Wildcard looks like they're actively supporting Snail Games by sending the unsuspecting players to the Conquest game mode, where they could get wiped by the cheating corrupt publisher tribe, or get banned by them if they start to win. It's tone deaf by Wildcard, and if they care about their players they shouldn't be supporting it. This is how Snail Games' action has affected ARK, but there is a much bigger picture that we are not seeing that will affect the business side of things as well. I'm pretty sure that every player and creator who's heard about the Island Boys getting banned for no reason is disgusted by it. Even the entitled fanboys who never want to say anything wrong with ARK, because if they're okay no one else matters. They are quiet on this as they can't twist it or make excuses for them. All Ark's past problems with the game has mainly been harmless. Bad planning, coding, unknown developer problems, or just incompetence. All those things can mostly be forgiven. But banning people for no reason is corrupt, malicious, and intentional. That cannot be forgiven, as long as they are still banned and Snail Games and its tribe abuses the system. The trust in Snail Games is gone, and if they don't correct this, it will remain gone. 
I've covered ARK for years before all this and have helped millions of people play ARK. In that time Snail Games has mostly flown under the radar, but a spotlight is on them now and everything they do. Most creators will look after and want what's best for their viewers. So when they can't trust Snail Games, they will stay clear of any games published by Snail, as they might screw over their players. If your company reputation and brand has turned to crap, then any new game with your logo on it is an instant avoid that new players and influencers will stay away from. This is what I see every time I see a new game with a Snail Games logo on it. The word is out now, so what do Snail think will happen next? Yes, a lot of the community will still buy Ark Standard, if it's any good, as it's a carry-on from what they have already been playing. And we all have been slow-boiled lobsters when it comes to game problems. But after that, gamers and creators will stay away from any new games published by Snail Games. Their sales will go down, and when game developers see that people are avoiding Snail Games, then Snail will find it harder and harder to sign up new games and developers. It's insane that Snail Games thought it was okay to ban and cheat in their own game and they thought they could actually get away with it. No other company would do it, as it's marketing suicide. I will be reviewing Ark Ascended and pulling no punches, to tell you what it's like whenever it comes out. It really had better be good, because Ark's had nothing but bad news lately. And when they drop a flashy trailer for it, remember everything that's been going on. All Snail had to do was unban the Island Boys and the other people they've unfairly banned. Stop helping T-Tribe cheat on the servers, and don't do any more unfair and corrupt banning. You know, everything every other publisher wouldn't do. That would start to fix some of the damage they've done to their reputation, and I wouldn't have to waste more of my life making bad news arc videos. What do you guys think about all this? Let me know in the comments below. Please like, subscribe if you've not already, click the bell notifications on all to get notified when I upload and stream next, check out the videos at the end, you might like them, and hopefully I'll see you again. I'll be streaming Starfield, so hopefully you'll join me for that. Have a good day. Goodbye.